Hello, my name is Katie McMurray, and I'm a clinical pharmacist with the Michigan Medicine Transplant Program. Today, along with my colleague, a fellow transplant pharmacist, Linda Fitzgerald, we will review important medications that you will take after your lung transplantation. In addition to this video, you will receive education after your transplant before you leave the hospital. Today, we will review what is rejection, what prevents rejection, what are the new medications you will take to protect your new lung transplant, how will you take your new medications, and what are possible side effects of your new medications. I will be presenting the first half of this video and Linda will be presenting the second half. Your body's defense system, called the immune system, is made up of antibodies, which are proteins and immune cells. They fight off things that are foreign to your body, like bacteria and viruses. Your immune system is what keeps you from getting sick. Unfortunately, your immune system may also think that your new lung is a foreign invader and try to attack it. We call this rejection. The transplant team will prescribe the medications that block your immune system and keep it from attacking or hurting your new lung and causing rejection. These medications are called immunosuppression or anti-rejection medications. These drugs weaken your immune system, but they do not eliminate it. Your body will never fully recognize the new lung as your own. Therefore, you will need anti-rejection medications for the life of your lung transplant. It is very important to take your medications as prescribed. The success of your transplanted organ is dependent on you using your anti-rejection medications properly. The right amount of immunosuppression is a constant balancing act. Not enough immunosuppression can result in rejection of your new lung. Too much immunosuppression can cause infections or side effects. Your transplant team will work with you to find the best medications in balance to keep you and your new transplanted lung healthy. It is very important to take your medications as prescribed. In general, you will take two kinds of medications after your transplant. The first, medications to keep your body from attacking or rejecting your new organ. This includes three medications that you will take for the life of your transplant. The second, medications that protect you from bacterial, viral, and fungal infections. This includes three new medications that you will take either for a short time or lifelong after your transplant. At this time, Linda will now review your new anti-rejection medications with you. Tacrolimus is the first medication that helps to prevent your body from rejecting the new organ. It is commonly called Tacro for short or by its brand name, Progress. Another option is Cyclosporin, brand name Neural or Gengraf. This is in the same medication family as Tacrolimus so you will never take both at the same time. You will usually take tacrolimus or cyclosporin twice a day, 12 hours apart, once in the morning, once at night. It is important to take it consistently in relation to meals. Your dose of tacrolimus or cyclosporin is determined by blood draws. When you go for a blood test, do not take tacrolimus or cyclosporin in the morning before the test. Get your blood drawn first, and then take tacrolimus or cyclosporin after your blood draw. We call this your trough level. It is important to have your trough level measured at the right time. Ask your tr transplant team if you're confused about when you need to have a sample of blood taken to measure your trough level. Some side effects that you may experience while taking tacrolimus or cyclosporin include tremors, or shakiness in your hands. You may notice it more right after transplant. Call your doctor if the shakiness becomes bothersome or uncontrollable. You may experience headaches. Let the transplant team know if not relieved by acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol. When your trough level gets too high for a long time, tacrolimus or cyclosporin can cause kidney damage. It will be important to get labs as scheduled to monitor your tacrolimus and cyclosporin trough levels so that the team can prevent any injury to your kidney. There are many other medications, food and supplements that alter the levels 
up or down in the blood, and you need to be aware of it. The list is long and you shouldn't worry about memorizing all of them. Keep in mind the general rule. If you start any new medications prescribed by other doctors or buy any supplements over the counter, ask your transplant team first if it's safe for you to take. You should not take ibuprofen, also known as Motrin, or naproxen, also known as Aleve, because they can damage your kidneys. You will want to avoid the following fruits. Grapefruit, pomegranate, papaya, pomelo, starfruit. Avoid eating them or drinking the juices either by themselves or in sodas or mixed juices. To summarize important points about tacrolimus and cyclosporin, you will take tacrolimus or cyclosporin twice a day, about 12 hours apart. Take your tacrolimus or cyclosporin after you get your blood drawn. Avoid certain fruits and ibuprofen and naproxen. Ask your transplant team before starting any new medication to ensure it's safe for you to take. Azathioprine, also known as brand name Imuran, or Michael family brand name Salceptor myfortic, are the second medications that help to prevent your body from rejecting the new organ. You will take azathioprine once a day and mycophenolate twice a day, 12 hours apart, once in the morning, once at night. A common side effect of azathioprine is lowering the immune cells in your body. The transplant team monitors this on your blood draw and will let you know if any medication changes are needed. It can also increase your risk of developing skin cancer. So you should take measures to protect your skin from the sun. Some common side effects of mycophenolate are diarrhea and an upset stomach. Contact your transplant team if diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting becomes bothersome. It can also lower the immune cells in your body. The transplant team monitors this on your blood draw and will let you know if any medication changes are needed. Do not make any changes to your medications, including how and when you take it, without first talking to your transplant doctor. Prednisone, also known as your steroid, is the third medicine that helps prevent your body from rejecting your new lung. You will usually take prednisone only once a day in the morning. Right after transplant, you will be given a high dose of steroids. Your dose of prednisone will decrease over time. This is called tapering. The transplant team will let you know when it's appropriate to taper your dose at each step. By 12 months post-transplant, you will be in the lowest dose of prednisone at five milligrams. You will continue to take this dose until the transplant team tells you otherwise. There are several side effects as a result of taking prednisone. Some of them may improve as the dose of prednisone lowers over time. It is important to note that you may require other medications and extra labs to address the side effects of prednisone after transplant. The team will work very closely with you if that occurs. At this point in time, Katie will finish out the presentation. Let's review important points about your new medications after transplant. You will start three new anti-rejection medications after transplant. It is very important that you take them as prescribed by your team. You will take them for the rest of your life, and they include tacrolimus or cyclosporin, azothioprine or mycophenolate, and prednisone. You will also take three new medications to prevent infections for a short time or lifelong. Never stop taking any medications unless instructed by your transplant team. You will receive more education from the pharmacy team and nursing team after transplant. But where can you find more information in the meantime? Refer to your Michigan Medicine transplant book or ask your transplant team.